for Spark Domes. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling. From the major leagues to the independents, this is Fatal 4-Way, live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the Fatal 4-Way, live on ON TV. We certainly appreciate you, t uh, you know, taking time out of your weekend to join us here tonight, along with Sean Grugel, Brian Ball, Paulo Edwards, I'm Jason Klaus. And gentlemen, we have a lot to talk about here, a lot of moving and shaking going on. We're going to bust somebody apart here in just a moment or two in relation to the Bash in Berlin recap, and that's how we're going <laughs> to kick things off this week on the show. Uh, it went down in Berlin, Germany. A, what I could not believe when I heard the largest gate for a WWE show of all time time yeah. doesn't matter where it was held in the world this event broke the gate record for a live wwe event and that is really incredible unto itself q uh, but let's run down the the results here real quick we saw as predicted it was cody rhodes who would re retain the wwe championship against kevin owens dave Meltzer would give this match four and a quarter stars, Q. What, what, what's your thoughts on this? Wow. Wow, he went higher than I actually thought he was going to go. Uh, man, okay, all right. I mean, I wouldn't give it that high, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought it was solid, you know, for what it was, but... Uh, wow, four, four and a quarter, all right. Four and a quarter. All right, yep. Dave. Dirty Dave. Now, when you and I did hot tag, you had not seen Bash in Berlin yet. No. Have you watched it since? Yeah. Okay. Um, C Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens, was this what you expected in terms of, of the match itself? It, it, it was. I mean, it was a decent match, but Uncle Dave has got to save some face here, you know, after giving six and a half stars to the AEW pay-per-view. Right. So he's got to make up some ground here. So, of course, he's going to go a little bit higher in the main event at, you know, Bash in Berlin. I'm kind of with a cue here, man. I would, probably would have went about three and a half stars on that match. I mean, there was nothing really I felt that made that match stand apart from anything else. Is that too high of a rating, Brian? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, across the board, I feel like that was, it was an average pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. So, And that was a very average match on an average pay-per-view. So if we we're going five stars as a top, which we don't, we know he doesn't, I would go like two and a half. Well, he does for WWE. Yeah. <laughs> for AEW, he, he, he bumps that up to yeah. like a what? Six? A maybe six, it's a, like, like a handicap crack. score maybe because <laughs> uh, <laughs> not WWE. Uh, we also saw the crowning of new w women's tag team champions with Bianca Belair and Jade uh, Cargill re regaining the titles from Isla Dawn and Alba Fire. This, is, this was the rating. I'm like, okay, this guy is completely off his rocker. Brian, three stars is what he gave this train wow. wreck. Yeah. <laughs> that, it, is, it was the biggest disappointment on that card. There was... I, I know why they're putting the belts on Bianca and Jade. I don't think Jade is ready. I don't know if Jade will ever be ready. There was parts of that match that were confusing to me. Like the Jade, where she rolled in, rolled back out, and that was enough to cause... Uh, the, who, who was it uh, between the two? I don't even know their names. Which, I, I which number one? Which one <laughs> to land on which two instead of the <laughs> other <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that that's a, a complete misfire on his part. For real. And, you know, we, we talked on the podcast. It was the exact same match except the colors of their outfits were, were, were different <laughs> and who walked out with it with the titles. But it, like, we talked about it. There is something missing with Jade Cargill. Like, yeah. the, she she misses one spot, and it is downhill faster than the Hindenburg. What is she missing here? Uh, she's, she's missing experience. That's really what she's missing. I mean, she was a big fish in a small pond in AEW. 
uh, I don't think that she's had that proper training because to me, everything that they give her is like, all right, here's what we're going to do in the match. Memorize this. Right. And as soon as something goes wrong, she has, she doesn't got the experience to pick it back up. And let's face it, I don't think Isla Dawn and Alba Fire have the experience either. So there's no synergy between all these women. So that's why that match was the dumpster fire that it was. Would it make a difference if Jade and Bianca had better opponents t to work with? Would Jade be more comfortable in that environment? Because he brings up a good point. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn are not veterans here. They're still very new, especially on the main roster level here. Is the quality of opponents what's, what she needs to get to that next level, to get you know her, her footing under her more than anything? Uh, for, for me, Jade needs somebody to carry her. <laughs> right. She needs, she definitely needs somebody to carry her, which means she's got to be in the ring with somebody that's really experienced. You were right. Uh, the witches aren't that good at carrying some, you know, uh, somebody. So to me, it's, she, Jade is improving slowly to me. Like, she's not the worst of the worst. I've seen a lot worse than Jay Cargill. For sure. For but, sure. Uh, you know, it's, it's the, the fact that she's progressing at a slow pace, that's a little concerning. But once she starts this program with Bianca, I think Bianca could carry Jade better than the witches can. Fair enough. The thing is, though, is if you in that match, you could see that they have actually really improved the spooky witches. Like, they look like the better tag team in that match. They, like, do. they look more I like mean, a team. Like if you yeah. want to look at like who's going to sell the most shirts, it's clearly Bianca and Shane. Yeah. Right. But who looked like a better tag team there? Spooky Witches. Yeah. Well, I think the Spooky Witches have, have been miscast. To me, before they uh, won the titles, they were never booked up. Right. I mean, they came out of nowhere. They were, they were pretty much absentees. So now that they're in the spotlight, it's a sudden thing for them. But in NXT, they were a team. I think they did a good job of being belt holders in the time that they had been. They surprised me. Could it be because, I mean, I mean we can look and we talked about, this is what I focused on with this whole card because, like you said, this was an average pay-per-view. This was a glorified Monday Night Raw. It just happened to be overseas in a record-breaking crowd. Okay? Carried by the crowd. Um, it's the little nuances is what I picked up on every single one of these matches. And, and you said it from, from your seat, you're looking at Alba Fire and Isla Dawn and they look like a better team. Bianca and Jade are the bigger stars. You see, and those, it's those little nuances we saw. Like I picked up on it with Kevin Owens, his, his little fa facial mannerisms before he went in on the attack mm -hmm. on Cody Rhodes. In this next match, the little things that Drew McIntyre did in his strap match with CM Punk, which, by the way, was four and a half stars, um, this was a predictable matchup because CM Punk needed this win, his first win in WWE in 10 years. Um, now, I believe, as we have said here on the program, this sets up Hell in a Cell, right, Q? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually got a lot to say about this match, but I'm going to try to summarize this. Um, this was better than the SummerSlam mm. to me. It was better than SummerSlam. But the four corner rule, the tapping the four uh, corners with the lights all in the corner really took me out of this one because it looked like a game show. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like I was watching a game show. I was waiting for a buzzer to go up. It was too, for a blood feud, I wanted to see more of a pummeling. I'm, I, I want to see these guys really go at it, strap each other up, bam, bam, you know, and try to go for the kill. But they're going for... Kind of like something you see at a halftime at a rodeo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just didn't fit to me. You know, I know it's the old school rules, but with the lights all in the corner and stuff, man, it was just, it, it really took me out. See, I would have rather seen like a first blood match or an I quit match in this one. More probably leaning more towards first blood, even though we've been seeing blood in their matches. But for that reason alone, because we've been seeing seeing blood, so they would have to be a little more careful in order not to end the match early to lead to the hell in the cell match. But 
Hey, this is what we got. We got the strap match, and you're absolutely right. You know, you're waiting for a whammy to come out of the corner when he <laughs> hit, hit, slaps the top of it. I, I've been in strap matches before. I've been in bull rope matches before. You know, they all generally seem to end the same anyway. You know, you got that whole caveat at the end. And I mean, how many, how many stars did Uncle Dave give? Four, uh, four and a half. <sighs> Three and a half. Four tops, I, I would think. I, I mean, they were, they they weren't light with the strap, but at the same time, to me, it wasn't about the strap. It was about the story and the stupid bracelet. To be honest with you, Hell in the Cell is the only way to blow this off, right, Brian? Yeah. Is, is there another st another t type of match that they could have that would be fitting? Because I mean, as far as rivalries go for 2024 in WWE, this one has had probably the most heat out of all of them yeah uh, you know and you gotta and with bad blood on the horizon and this is where hell in the cell made its debut in 97 it seems like all the cards are in place this has to be it right i i yeah i i think it's definitely gonna have to be hell in the cell i feel i mean i could i could easily see them doing uh live and rhea Hell in the Cell as well. Right. Um, I don't mind the idea of a first blood match with the two of them. I hate I quit matches. I don't want to see a street fight. I think those are always terrible. There, it's, well, it's We've overdone. Seen a lot. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, they just put fancy titles on them. Right. You know, same, same concept for, for sure. So we've just seen that with Braun and uh, Bronson. Bronson. Mm -hmm. so. What kind of stakes can you put on this match? to actually end this feud and just tie a bow on it. At this point, it doesn't seem like there's anything. It seems like these two guys are going to hate each other forever and always want to fight each other. What I like about this rivalry is, you know, back in the day when you had a long-running rivalry and you were going for that big blow-off, you brought the steel cage out, just your regular steel cage because yeah. it was an attraction. Well, now as the business has evolved, this is, you know, the steel cage match can happen on any random Monday night, Friday night, Wednesday night at this right, point. Yep. Um, so to bring in Hell in the Cell with the, with, with the pageantry that, that that structure has, I really feel like um, all roads are, are leading to, to this, and I really can't think of another rivalry other than the, what, what you're talking about with Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley um being held inside hell in the cell so that remains to, to be seen just real quick you know I, I caught a little nuance of cm punk wearing the larry the dog shirt best in the world i don't know if you guys caught that or not <laughs> but you know this is why i'm kind of leaning towards the i quit match because i can almost see a finish where drew has punk in some in some kind of hold or maneuver and someone who's siding with Drew has Larry the dog, either you you do something or I'm going to, you know, you quit or I'm going to hurt the dog type of thing. You know what I'm saying? To kind of give this up and, to get, <laughs> and, and continue to feud. No, I know yeah, it sounds definitely silly, continue but to would be, that would be awful. <laughs> but God, dude, we, 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 dang. Well, look at Pepper with the big boss <laughs> man and now Big <laughs> boss man is the Big boss man is the greatest heel of all time because of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the oh kennel from hell God. is how it yeah. Oh, Lord. Man, and then he, then he, uh, what did he go to the funeral home for uh, the big boss man and drug his dead dad across the, oh, the um, big, big show's show yeah. dad, man. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Jeez, yeah. man, big boss man. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> in a three, in a three and three quarter star fair, the mixed tag team act saw Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley beat uh, uh, Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. I thought this was actually a better match than three and three quarter stars, and I really looked forward to, to this as far as a mixed tag team match. And I <clears> said, <throat> uh, I said it on the podcast. I looked forward to this match more than I did Macho Man and Sapphire or Sh Sherry against the American Dream and Sapphire back in the day. What, what was your opinion? I I think it was one of the better matches on the card. Um, it would be between that and uh, Gunther and Randy Orton. Like those were obviously, I think the better of the ones. I would probably go more around the four star range for both of those. Um, yeah, 
I'm trying to remember that match now in my head. I'm like, replay. Yeah. I remember liking it, but I don't remember <laughs> much of it. Well, as far as mixed tag matches, where where will where, where will this one be ranked? Oh, I don't even know, man. I, I, you know, like I told you before, I would have wrote this a whole lot differently. I, I don't like the idea of the Terror Twins. Uh, I, I would have liked to seen Rhea turn on Priest, and that way we could have got the return of the Latino Heat with Dom. But you know that didn't happen. So I, I mean, is it going to be etched in history? Eh, you know, it'll be talked about, but I, I, I think I'm kind of with Uncle Dave on this one. I'm still going to go three and a half, three and a quarter stars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. Rhea is a huge star. Yeah. Yes. She is huge. She is over probably uh, the fifth most over star men and women you look at that graphic right there she's the one that pops off the screen first oh, yeah she's she's a huge star i mean just her being in that match man it was just but uh for me the match was fun mm -hmm. i see it as a fun match like it was it wasn't like overly uh you know out of this world or anything like that but it was it was good fun i would give it a three but then I will bump it up to a four once Rhea did the pin on uh, Liv Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I remember that. <laughs> uh, the main event suck. Uther retained the World Heavyweight Championship against Randy Orton. This one got four and a half stars. There was some, some debate as to what match was going to close out Bash in Berlin. I'm really glad they went this Me route too. with it. Um, both guys came out of this thing looking like a million bucks. Randy Orton, the consummate professional. This match was exactly what it had to be, in, in my view, and a great way to end th this this event. Would you agree? Absolutely. What really stood out for me in this match was the selling. Mm -hmm. I mean, these guys were selling the beating that they were giving each other, and uh, and I love that you. I hate when people just go to the next spot and act like the last spot didn't happen. So right. these guys really, really uh, uh, show the beating. And uh, man, Randy is a big dude, man. I didn't he, realize he's how- He's gotten big. He is getting very oh. meaty, you know, oh, man. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed this match four, what is it? Four and a half? Four and a half. Four yep. and a half stars, man. That's the closest to a five star match we got, huh? I, yep. yep. So, uh, this match, I would give it, I would give it a, uh, I would give it like four and a quarter. It was, it, it, it got real slow. It did get real slow, and I think they could have shaved about at least five minutes off. Sure, because it, was, it went about what thirty-five minutes. It was a very long match, but uh, the crowd was into it. I mean, you know, so it was, it was hot. Trying to get the the, the power bomb spot, that was uh that was a selling. That that took like five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Him trying to get that power bomb, but uh, you know it was, it, it, was, it was good. It was good for what it was. This was the first match in a long time, especially when you consider the world heavyweight championship unto itself. This had a big fight feel in it. It did, and you know we we all knew Gunther was going to go over, and it's really hard not to sell when you're working with Gunther because he's he's going to make sure you sell. Uh, Myself, I'm I'm not a fan of the sleeper hold. Um, you know, I just uh, I don't know. I it was a predictable match. I'm glad they gave uh, Gunther an opponent to make him stand up and shine and actually look good going over on him. That's what made all the difference because this would not have gone as well for for Gunther's first outing as world champion if it wasn't Randy Orton, right? Yeah. Uh, the things I took away from the match was. How much fun Randy was having out there, especially with that crowd. Yeah, you could you could see it. He was having a blast. And two, am I right in remembering? Did Gunther come out with blood already on his chest? Like it was already speckled up on his chest before that match started. And I was like, what happened there? That was from uh, the Damien match, I believe. Was it SummerSlam? Because he was cut. Yeah, he was cut there. Yeah, I don't he think was he like, fully healed. Like he was already like bloodied up yeah. before it started. Gunther is, um, this, this dude is going to be the face of the company like, before long. 
he he just has such a presentation. He is very authentic. You look at this dude like that's a guy that's going to mess people up in real life if he really wanted to. Like there is n no doubt about it. Uh, so now we're, we're we put Berlin in the rear view. We're now on the road to Bad Blood, and we're, it's going to be very interesting to, to see how that unfolds in the weeks le leading up to the next premium live event. Which leads us into the fall season. And with the fall season, especially in the television network world, uh, a lot of moving parts are happening, and the world of professional wrestling is no exception. Beginning next week will be the first of s several changes that are coming for WWE and changing shows from one network to another. And it starts next Friday, September the 13th, when SmackDown will be moved from Fox to the USA Network. Um, we kind of talked about this on, on the podcast, and I kind of wanted to get your feel for it, Q. Uh, is moving SmackDown from Fox, which is a network, a broadcast network, to USA Network, is that a downgrade in your view? Is that going to be per perceived as a downgrade? Heck no. I hate Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I'm so sick of looking at SmackDown and seeing all the black screens and every time somebody say a, a, a cuss word, they cut, they cut the whole feed off. Yep. I mean, Fox is terrible. Okay. I'm done with them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, m moving SmackDown to USA in, in the long haul, like, much like you're saying, and I did not take that into consideration, but... Is the creative freedom going to be worth leaving the exposure that Fox brought to to the show? You know, I didn't think about the way Q put it either uh, when we talked about it on the podcast. I just thought it would be more accessible for people without cable systems to be able to watch it on Fox. But, um, yeah, I think the creativity might you know, be a little bit un unleashed, so to speak. And, uh, yeah, it I, one thing I do kind of hope from all of this is we see less picture in picture. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hate picture in picture. If we're going to do commercials, let's just go to a commercial, you know. With Raw going to Netflix in January and all of the anticipation of what that content is going to be, we're obviously expecting a TV 14 rating. You know, they're going to go back to er Attitude Era esque storylines, right? So, in order for SmackDown to keep up c creatively, going to USA Network had to happen, right? In in, in your view, absolutely. Uh, I don't think you can have one pushing the boundaries and having one on the level of a Disney. Like you're gonna have one here, and you're gonna have you need to have SmackDown at least be somewhat on the same page. And I think that's going to USA is gonna help them in that. I agree, and they've been a long-term partner with, with WWE, so it's going to be very be beneficial for all parties. It's not like it's a brand-new partnership or anything of that nature. Um, on October 1st, uh, NXT is going to move from USA, and they have found a new home on the CW Network, which is a network, a, a broadcast network, lower tier, but still, nonetheless, um, this gives... NXT a fresh coat of paint as it were and on October 1st they are going to be on the road in Chicago and what you know it Q old CM Punk is going to show up would you believe that you know what I believe it <laughs> <laughs> good old CM Punk you know this, this is good for NXT I, I'm excited for them and as an NXT fan you know I really want to see them exceed because NXT kind of been in that uh defeated state since uh, they went head to head with AEW and everybody kind of see oh well AEW is getting this number and NXT is only getting that and all this stuff <coughs> now they can put all that stuff in the rear view they're yeah. going to CW this is a fresh start this is not NXT 2.0 oh my god let's not the less we talk about that the better uh, so so I, I believe this fresh coat of paint is going to be a great nice glistening coat this is extremely huge for the CW. I, at, at first, it was, oh, it's only NXT. But with, with the cross-promotion that they're doing with them in TNA, 
This is going to be very beneficial for C CW to get a whole new crop of eyeballs on their network, right? Would, would you agree? I'd agree. I think they already kind of have a lot of the eyes of the demographic already mm -hmm. because they've had like a lot of the Marvel, DC, or I guess it would be more DV DC TV shows and stuff like that. They had right. Smallville, they had like, like I don't Flash, know, Flash and all Flash. those. Yeah. I go, that age group is going to be that same age group that will is going to watch pro wrestling. Are they going to have to break out more big stars than CM Punk for, for this pr premiere? No. And the reason why I say that is uh, today I was actually kind of scrolling through you know, our, my guide there and I saw TNA is already on, or Impact is already on the feed for CW under YouTube. Oh, uh, Under YouTube stream. That's interesting. So we're going to probably be able to catch some of those fans and bring them back over to NXT since they're seeing some of their favorites like, you know, Joe Hendry and uh, Jordan Grace and uh, Zachary Wentz are all on NXT now. Mm -hmm. So who knows? We might get a larger fan base and bigger viewership as uh, we go. Maybe we might even see the expansion of Impact, you know, having a live show on CW as well. It's, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, when we get down to the Mount Rushmore segment later on in the program. Um, and if you have an opinion on Bash in Berlin, you have an opinion on the, the shows moving from one network to the, to the other, uh, you're invited to call in, be a part of the conversation. The number is at the bottom of your screen. Uh, the wrestling world, the wrestling fans, the IWC uh, went ablaze this week with the announcement and the release of the trailer for the highly anticipated docuseries that has re revolved around Vince McMahon. On September the 25th, Netflix is going to re release the six-part series, Mr. McMahon. And this has everybody talking. This is probably is going to be the most talked about news story in all of wrestling in the year 2024, Q. Would you agree with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is, uh, this is highly anticipated. I don't remember the last docuseries that uh, I was more excited for. Uh, the Last Ride? Yeah that, yeah, that was pretty good, too. Well, that, you know, but uh, I, f I feel like this here, when we're, we're talking about controversy here, man, it, how do you top this, man? This is going to be huge. There is so much anticipation about this, Sean, for a number of reasons. One, WWE does not have a producer credit on this. And this is a two-part thing. This whole idea was McMahon's idea. And then the bottom fell out in January with the lawsuit coming out. Netflix continued on with the project. It's going to be very interesting what this fi final show is going to be all about. <laughs> Makes you wonder if these producers are going to be as vindictive as what McMahon was when he came out with the uh, Ultimate Destruction video of Ultimate the Ultimate Warrior. Warrior. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of curious myself to see just how far into the controversies and allegations they're going to go into this. Or does McMahon have his name on any producer credits on this at all? Uh, not, not that I'm aware of. Then this could be really good. Right. This could be really good. This whole thing it was was his idea to uh, to document. I think originally this was su supposed to center around the impending merger with you with UFC that would create TKO. But like we said all of these allegations started coming out. So now we're getting two sides. We're getting the promoter. We're gonna get the, you know, the mastermind, the madman, the puppet master, which is a perfect <laughs> graphic for, for this whole thing. What are your expectations with, with this? Uh, they're high. I think this is gonna be really good. It's, my wife has me watch so many true crime docu-series. <laughs> it's gonna be so nice to turn the table on her and be like, all right, well, now we get to watch this docu-series right. together. I, I think it's going to be amazing. I know they already said they're going to touch on the steroids. They're going to touch on Chris Benoit. They're going to touch on the new legal allegations against him. Uh, it's 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 going to be a fun watch. It's six parts. I'm like, that's going to be awesome. Yeah. And apparently they're going to they're going to re release them all at once instead yep. of week by week. So 
Uh, yeah, mark your calendar, September the 25th. Uh, it's a it Wednesday. Will, it, is it? Yeah, I already marked it. Okay, well, he's done it. <laughs> it is a Wednesday. Clear your schedule for that, that Wednesday. <laughs> And more exciting news came down the wire here the, the other day that uh, had me excited about it. I don't mind telling you. Evidently, we're getting the return of Saturday night's main event. It was announced earlier this week that WWE and NBC had agreed to a December date for um, a Saturday night show. There was no name attached to it. Well, yesterday news broke that it would indeed be Saturday night's main event. Brian, I'm going to you with this, obviously for, for obvious reasons. How excited are you that these four prime time specials, prime time, are going to be the return of Saturday night's main event? Yeah, I mean, I had to get dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> Saturday night main event will always hold a spot in my heart as my childhood, like my introduction to wrestling. I remember being young and being at a babysitter's because my mom would take off to go to bingo. And that was like the one spot I remember looking forward to. Like they'd always let me watch wrestling. We'd we'd have the couch cushions off. We're dropping elbows on them. It's awesome. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Merry Christmas, right? Yeah, buddy. I am so (laughs) looking forward to this. The, The only thing I can absolutely hope for is I hear obsession by Anna Motion <laughs> in the opening credits. I, I want to hear that. Um, much like Brian here, though, very much a part of my childhood. I will watch Saturday Night's May event, then I flip the channel to watch Glow, the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. Lord, let's bring that show back to you. Let's, let's do a complete circle here. <laughs> Can we get American Gladiators, too? I, I'd so be down for that. <laughs> 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 Expectations for the return of Saturday night's main event. High. Yeah. High. Not me high, but it's, my expectations are high. <laughs> I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm well, definitely looking forward to this. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've been robbed, man. We've been robbed of this, man. So I'm so, I'm excited, and I'm really putting my trust into Triple H to really book this thing the right way. So far, he's his track record has been pretty good. He's doing pretty impressive. good. He's he, doing pretty good. Keep uh, up the record. Don't stop now. Right. And as far as All Elite Wrestling goes, no news. With that, we're, we're going to take a quick timeout. We'll be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV right after this. The Goring families are invited to celebrate the arrival of fall by coming out to Camp Agawam on Saturday, September 21st from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Fall Festival of Family Fun offers crafts, a petting farm, carnival games, and a hay wagon ride to a pumpkin patch. There will be plenty of fun photo ops, and best of all, parking and admission is free. The entrance to Camp Agawam is located at 1301 Clarkston Road. For more information, you can call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. Guys and ghouls of all ages are encouraged to lurch, stagger, and stumble to downtown Lake Orion on Saturday, September 21st to take part in the 11th Annual Zombie Walk and Poker Run. The Zombie Horde will gather at Ed's Broadway gift and costume, and as the clock strikes eight, begin the march of the undead to several local eateries, offering drink specials and appetizers. Although we can't guarantee that brains will be on the menu, Money raised from the event benefits the Orion Light and Parade, scheduled for Saturday, December 7th. Call Ed's Broadway Gift and Costume at 248-693-4220 to get involved today, if you dare. <laughs> And we welcome you back to Fatal 4-Way live on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you taking time out of your evening to give us a watch. If you want to join the conversation, the phone lines are open, 810-331-2829. We broke down Bash in Berlin. We butchered Dave Meltzer. Um, We talked about the fall TV updates, and now we're going to send it over to our good friend, the 
Brian or Jesus. Oh, the, the Brian. Like the Brian. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian Stan Denver. Lee of <laughs> PFC. The Brian. The Brian, the Brian, Brian Ball. <laughs> Let's remember that. It's a the Brian Ball from now on. Uh, <laughs> actually, I got this idea from Q. We were talking about uh, big bold predictions for 2025, and I just we talked. He said it first about saying doing it later, and I was like, let's do it now because it's almost like. By December, I feel like we're going to already know some of the storylines going into 2025. Mm -hmm. So if we do it now, it's going to seem way more impressive. Sure. I dig it. All right. I will go first. Uh, my number one, Mandy Rose will return and win the 2025 Royal Rumble. Oh. Which oh. I said before I, I found out that there was actually videos of her training. I said it to Q, and he goes, he goes, did you see she was already training? I go, I did not. But <laughs> now I feel even more positive that maybe this one will come true. Huh. Um, that is bold. Yeah, I appreciate that. I, man, I would love to see a, a feud between her and Tiffany. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. that'd be a hot one. Good. Like if we could see like she ends up winning that, and we see them at WrestleMania together. All right, I'll move on to my number two. Uh, WWE will announce the 2026 WrestleMania will take place at the Dome in Las Vegas. Mm. Oh, the Sphere. Yeah, the Sphere. The Sphere. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but a dome and a sphere are the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the sphere. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, anyways. <clears throat> uh, number three, <laughs> TNA and its partnership with, w with WWE will surpass AEW's ratings. I agree with that one. Yep. Number four, we will see both a men and women's heavyweight champion in 2025 that do not currently work with work for WWE. Now that's a bold oh, prediction. That's right a there. very bold one, yeah. yeah. Good one, Brian. Ooh, all right, Brian. Do you have speculation as to who that may be? Uh yes. I think and they both uh currently work for DNA. Really? Jo Jordan, Jordan and Grace and Joe. And Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Henry. Okay. Okay. All right. Sean, how about you, man? All right. Pull it up here. Uh, my first uh bold prediction will be an NXT versus TNA crossover PLE. I don't think that's too far off anyway. No. Uh, I'm going to save this one. Um, Oba Femi gets a title shot versus Walter uh, as he gives up the North American Championship to compete on Raw. Gunther? Uh, Gunther. Walter. <laughs> Gunther. I was like, whoa, <laughs> flashbacks. Um, <laughs> but I, I think Oba Femi, they're just making him so dominant in NXT, he's not going to have anyone else to beat, and he's going to have to move the Raw and... Who's unstoppable? Gunther. Bronson Reed. Uh, <laughs> well, COVID can stop Bronson Reed. Oh, Lord. Um, oh, Lord. I four, think four uh, e a third one is Ethan Page and Joe Hendry will compete at WrestleMania. And then this one, I hope against hope this one comes true. There, Jesus Brian, if you're listening, <laughs> make this work. <laughs> Tony Khan gets removed as president and CEO of AEW, and not on behalf of the executive board, but from his father, as his father will promote Shane McMahon to take over Tony Khan's booking duties. A lot that's, of speculation with Shane McMahon showing up there. on uh, AEW here short, sooner rather than later. John Moxley made some comment the, the other oh, night, yeah, this ain't your that. company no more. And I was like, oh, what, what oh, do you mean by that? that? Yeah, what does that mean? Hollywood! All right, it's on me. Okay, you guys are really bold, man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> My first one. 2025, Vince McMahon will be charged. Okay. Okay. He will be charged. Number two. I don't know how bold that is. I kind of yeah, see that going. Yeah, that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna happen, yeah. He's not getting out of this one. Uh, number two. We'll see the return of Alistair. Ooh. Okay. Number three, and this one is not as bold, but you know it is what it is. John Cena will defeat Randy Orton at WrestleMania for the WWE Championship. Okay. Well, that's a prediction within a prediction. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You see, you see, there's layers. Line that I up. See yeah. did, oh. You see what you did? You see what I did there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number four. Bianca and Montez Ford will turn heel and will become a power couple. 
I have. I actually hope that happens. That those two, man, yeah, I would love to see that happen actually. And and I'm totally down with with your Cena Orton thing too as well. Um, if you have a bold prediction for 2025, call into the show. Be a part of the conversation. The number's at the bottom of your screen. My Mount Rushmore. Um, TNA is going to land a major network deal, which could coincide with the CW thing that, that we talked about earlier. Braun Breaker is going to be the man that retires John Cena. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah. Wow. I like that. That's a good one. That is going to be the passing of the torch, and that is what is going to catapult Braun Breaker to a historic 2026, 20, in my view. Uh, WWE and TNA will be on opposite teams at War Games Ooh. in 20, not NXT, WWE versus TNA at War Games at the Survivor Series in 2025. Okay. And finally, after years of speculation and hope and anticipation, I believe... <laughs> <laughs> WWE is going to break ground on an actual Hall of Fame building. And I think it's going to be do, in Las Vegas, Nevada. I almost wouldn't mind what's going to be that they do a WWE museum, yeah. which would include the Hall of Fame. Because yeah. we've talked about it before. Yeah. I go, I don't understand how with all that stuff that they have in the warehouses that they don't have like a museum that you could go through. I would, yeah, I would go doing visit. the TV show, The Greatest Treasures, and going out and collecting this stuff. I know they're putting it on display for like these fan interactive events, but my God, having an actual physical Hall of Fame, it's going to generate so much money. So yeah. millions. Yeah. Put it in millions. Orlando. I mean, you're talking about a tourist capital? Right I there. I feel like they are going to focus a lot of their attention on Las Vegas right now. A lot of sports and entertainment entities <clears throat> are. <laughs> I I I feel like I I really f feel like what we have or what they have we like I'm part of the company. What they have in Orlando is going to Las Vegas. I think they they are setting they are finding a a piece of real estate out there and it is going to be WWE C Central. The, in, in my view, the headquarters is up for sale. So it is yeah. up for sale. They yeah. didn't even put a price on it. They're just oh. taking bids. It's like <laughs> right. Yeah. Let's just get rid of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, so that was our Mount Rushmore segment for for this week. Um, and again, if you want to be a part of the conversation, the number is eight one zero three three one two eight two nine. Phone lines are open if you want to be a part of the conversation. With that, Mr. Grugel, we are going to turn it over to you with the debut of your new segment. Yeah, so we're going to do uh, shooting the ropes here. That's my nice AI-generated logo that I, that I uh, typed in and came up with. Um, you know, I had a couple people asking about why the name shooting the ropes. Well, there's a few guys. Uh, without them, we wouldn't be doing this here today. Uh, we wouldn't be doing the podcasts. Um, guys like Joe Johnson who's in the control control desk in the back here uh, Tim Williams Sean Sisk they did a show specifically on this TV channel at one time called uh, the jobber hour and Sean uh, Sisk did a segment called shooting the ropes and I got a hold of him and I asked him I said Sean you know kind of in tribute to what you've given to us you know you start you started the foundation I'd appreciate if you let me use the name of your show so that we can continue on with it. And now shooting the ropes can have a couple different meanings. So uh, to peel back the curtain a little bit, when you're talking about shoot, you're talking about going for real. You know, real life, you know, is a shoot. What we see in a wrestling ring is a work. And so what I want to bring about here is a shoot. And uh, what I want to do this week is I want to talk about independent wrestling. And we do a lot of this on the hot tag that you can listen to on the PFC Network, uh, Spotify, Apple iTunes. Uh, you can find us on... Wherever you listen to podcasts. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know? So I just wanted to talk about what it takes to make a wrestling show. You know, a lot of people, when they go into an arena, they see a wrestling ring, they see the wrestlers, they see the referee. But there's a lot that goes into it. You have your ticket sellers, you have your building owners, you have your custodians, you have, you know, uh, the people that take away the ring gear. And I think a lot of independent wrestlers forget about what makes 
a wrestling show. So I'm going to put out a challenge to independent workers out there. It's cool after your match to meet your opponent back there, thank them for the match, you know, congratulate them, whatever, whatever the case may be. But don't forget about the people that help put on the show. Much like how Tim Williams, Joe Johnson, and Sean Sisk laid the foundation for us to be able to do this show, you have the referee you should thank, the person who produces your music that you should thank, security, the person that owns the building. Walk up to them, take 30 seconds out of your day, shake their hand and thank them for giving you the platform to be able to perform your craft in front of these people who are now looking up to you and appreciate you for doing what you're doing in the ring. Being in the ring isn't for everybody, but a lot of people aspire to be in this business. And if they can't be in the ring, then you know, thank, thank, thank them for being able to help you perform your craft in the ring. That's why I want to get out there. I want to challenge every independent wrestler out there to go out there and thank these people. Because without them, you're not having a complete wrestling show. And I just want to put it out there. If you're out and about and you're in the Clinton Township area, I want you to check this out real quick. Um, at the Clinton Township uh, Premier Event Center on September 28th, XICW, I want, I want you fans to go out there and see what a proper independent wrestling show looks like. Go check them out, XICWDetroit.com. I'm not going to go through all the names because it wouldn't be fair to me to list every, you know, their, their show and not list every promotion out there. I got away from that. But wrestlers, when you go perform on this show, thank everyone from the person that owns the building to the person cleaning the toilets because without them, you wouldn't have the platform that you got to be able to perform your craft. And to Joe, Tim, and Sean, thank you. Thank you for laying the foundation for us to be able to what we're doing here today on the Fatal 4-Way. That's what I got for shooting the ropes. I'm going to tag in on that. It doesn't necessarily come right down to just the workers. It's the promoters. It's the people who are running the show. It's the people who are supposed to be teaching the young talent on how to be pro professionals. It's more than just t taking a fistful of money and showing them how to, for the lack of a better term, shoot the ropes, to take a back bump, to be, to be able to execute your basic ma maneuvers. That's scratching the surface. You're not teaching anybody anything other than how to be a con man or con woman. And that is the underlying ugly spot of professional wrestling, especially in the independent level. Now, much like what Sean was saying, the guys and the gals that are, that are coming up in the business in the here and now have an opportunity to take this business to the next level. And just when you think you, wrestling cannot get any bigger, if somehow or another finds a way. But in order for that to be a thing for the long haul, you got to put people, the right people, in the right places. And if you do not have a solid foundation on what this business is built upon, this business is doomed. If you don't instill the basic fundamentals of what made this business as great as it is. And without the right people, without the right performers, without the right athletes, our time in this world is limited. Now, people will say, well, the business is evolving. Yes. Yes, it is. Because the right people are in the right places. But eventually, if you don't establish nonstop from now to the end of time, the basic foundations of what made professional wrestling as great as it is, this will go to the wayside like so many other sport and entertainment entities. The story with professional wrestling will just have more chapters. To the promoters, to the trainers, and I don't mean the reputable ones who have been more than established for X amount of time. Because there are reputable names, especially here in the state of Michigan, that have earned a reputation 
that they are the go-to on how to be trained properly if you want a future in professional wrestling. And you do have your goals, your dreams, and your aspirations to move to WWE or AEW or TNA or wherever your heart desires. But make no mistake about it. If you are not a properly trained professional from head to toe, inside and out, your time here is, is numbered. Your time in the spotlight will be very limited. And yes, I realize it's individualized, but they have to be taught. And trainers, promoters, owners, whatever you call yourself, this goes back on you. Because you have a responsibility. You Not only do you have the responsibility of booking the venues and all of that stuff, you have a responsibility to train the next generation of talent. And the talent will only be as good as the training they are receiving. So if your sole purpose is only to make money, that's all you care about is how much money can you get with the least amount of effort, I am telling you right now, get out of the damn business. You are a stain, you are part of the problem that is manifesting across all realms of social media especially. You see it with the IWC. The IWC wouldn't be as toxic as, as it is if there wasn't such toxic people who are trying to poison the future of this business because you're more interested in making money. It goes beyond that. If that is your sole purpose in professional wrestling, you are here for the wrong damn reason. Straight up. And you know what you lack? You lack heart. You lack the vision to be a part of something, not just that benefits you, but an entire culture that has really shaped sports and entertainment in this country and around the world. So if we want this business to truly evolve, you got to go back to square one. And square one is the one who are training and teaching the new crop of talent. There are amazing trainers out there. There are reputable schools out there. Do some research. Because you get what you pay for. I'm telling you that right now. You get what you pay for. Q, do you have anything you'd like to add on, on to this? Because I feel like I just cut, cut a, a 10 minute promo and I do <laughs> apologize. But damn, man, I get passionate about this. Because this is something we all care about, you know? Sean and I have, have a unique perspective because we were in the business. We busted our asses for over two decades for this business. So yeah, we have a little bit more stake in the game. And we want to see this succeed. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I will STF you. I mean, he speaks the truth. <laughs> I don't have, you know, I don't really have anything to add to it, man. But you, you, you guys pretty much covered it all. You guys said it all. But, and, and those are pretty much words of wisdom. I mean, th those are words that should resonate to anybody that's in the industry or trying to get into the industry, you know. Take these words and use them, you know, and, uh, and try to be the best. I don't got much. It's real simple. If you guys got questions about wanting to be a wrestler, now look. I don't look like a wrestler anymore. I get it. Q, Brian, you guys look like wrestlers. I don't look like one anymore, but I can direct you to schools. I can tell you where to go get trained. Like Jason said, there are reputable schools in the area. You can find us all on Facebook. Just look up the Fatal 4-Way. You got a telephone number right there on your screen. You want to know something? You got five minutes to give us a call. We can help you out and direct you to the right people. This is what we're here for. We're not only here to inform and to educate, but we're here to help, to help the business. That's what this show's about. That's what Sean and Tim and Joe started. We're here to help the business. We're here to help you. And to add to that, you have awesome guys who are in the business, who were in the business that can help train you. I'm a fitness coach. I can train you and help train you in the uh, in the in the health 
uh, realm. You know, I can I can help train you in 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 how to be you know uh, healthy. What the hell are you bringing to the table? I was <laughs> saying, I, I'm not really offering anything. Promos. <laughs> Brian is the promo, promo guy. guy. <laughs> Yeah, wait till you see my Mount Rushmore after dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, listen, I, I I realize I totally went off the rails for for a second there, but I the reason why I don't go on so social media a whole lot is because, especially Twitter. I mean, geez, oh, Pete, it is one of the most toxic environments I've 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 ever gone to but it's almost like like a car wreck like you don't want to watch it but you can't turn away from it you you know what I mean but you, like I but you also get a gauge for what's registering what's trending what what are people dialed into and and the things that are getting the most attention that that are being that, that that's being talked about more is a lot of the negativity that goes on and oh I yeah. would have booked it this way I would have booked it that way Man, it goes way beyond how you're being booked, you know, and that's what I don't understand why there's so much, like, enjoy it for what it is. Do you sit during a Marvel movie and butcher it, you know, tear it apart? Well, like, Jesus, I would have had them do this and rewrite that. I mean, enjoy wrestling for what it yeah. is, you know. Everything's well, not going to be for you. No, it's a, like, like we've all said, wrestling is like a buffet. You know, there's something for everybody, yeah. you know, but... Uh, and I am not on X. Don't. <laughs> You're not missing anything. I don't mind telling you. Listen, we uh, we appreciate everybody t tuning in here this week. And uh, we will be back in two weeks' time. We will have more information, I'm sure, on the upcoming Bad Blood pay-per-view event. So hopefully we'll at least have the main event to break down and talk about. We're going to keep our eyes on the headlines of all things in and around the professional wrestling world, whether it's WWE, AEW, or the independent cir circuit. It does not matter. If it comes across our radar, it's fair game here. With that, we, uh, we, we wish you a very happy and healthy week. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other. We'll see you next time right here on Fatal 4-Way, live on ONTV.